Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Peter here, also known as Universal Head, and today I'm going to show you some Dystopian Wars! Dystopian Wars is a fantastic uh, alt history steampunk uh, Victoriana tech kind of a naval war game and it's been around for a long time of course it's done by War Cradle Studios now and they have been churning out a fantastic range of fleets I mean there's so much stuff available really quickly for dystopian wars they are also extremely kind and generous people and have been sending me a lot of samples of these models so I can show them to you and today we're going to look at the victory battle fleet set and this is for the crown who are basically the English and uh, it's a beautiful set of models I really do love these models they're very uh, clean and crisp plastics they've got lots of options you can uh, make them up in lots of different ways to make different configurations of ships and they just look fantastic when they're painted up now a strange thing about the packaging for uh, war cradles dystopian wars stuff is that it just has this kind of dull black and white kind of picture on the back and i don't quite understand why they do this because they look so great when painted and it's quite a, a common thing in the industry to show painted models on the back of a set even though they're not painted inside so re really you know war cradle what you should do is get these models painted and put them on the back i know that they do paint them up because they show them online and i in fact use those color schemes for reference when i'm painting my own so yeah put them on the back and identify each of the different options uh, with their names because it's a little bit confusing it just sort of says well you can build a frontline cruiser and then it tells you all the options and it shows you them but it doesn't identify which option is which so uh, so you've got to have a pretty organized brain when you get into dystopian wars so you can nut out all the different types of ships and weapon configurations and things like that of course if you're playing a tabletop miniatures game like dystopian wars you've probably already got a brain like that i know i do and i kind of enjoy sort sorting all that out but it could certainly be made easier for beginners anyway that aside i waited until i'd actually painted this set before i started showing it to you because i want to show it off at its greatest advantage and inspire you with these models because um, as i said they are beautiful um, i'm going to do another one after this as well so uh, I'm catching up on my backlog of Dystopian Wars models and I'll be showing them off to you fully painted. I'm not just going to show you those plastic sprues. No, we're going to see them fully painted and ready for war. Now, I must point out, of course, is that, as I mentioned, there are lots of different configurations for these ships. So I'll just mention what they are as we go through. Let's start off with the granddaddy of them all, which is this lovely resin ship. Now, this one here, as you can see, it's quite stunning. And this is a resin ship, so it's a solid block of resin. And um, you'll get in all these Battlefleet sets, there's usually one or two ships that are uh, resin ones and the rest are on plastic sprues. So this one, of course, is your heavy carrier. And you can build this in two configurations, the Victory or the Arc. Uh, I've done it as the Victory, so I've got rocket batteries. Now, of course, what I've done is made these little uh, rocket batteries magnetized. And that's very easy to do. You can see I've just... Uh, Widen the hole there and put in a 5 by 1.5 millimeter rare earth magnet and widen the bottom of that one and they go together quite beautifully. So I can easily exchange those for different weapons if I like. There's also a generator in the middle and I can change that up as well if I want to. So I find magnetizing these to be really good and give you lots of play options. That said, of course, I'm not really super obsessive about having the right options when I get it on the table. Because I'm not playing tournament games, I'm just playing fun games with my friends. Um, I'm quite happy to put a, a model on the board and say, well, that's actually the other configuration. As long as both players agree, it's fantastic. It doesn't have to have exactly the right weapons on it. Um, but the good thing about magnetizing your weapons, I find, is that when you're playing, you can swivel the weapons towards your target. And I can't tell you how satisfying that is. <laughs> if you've watched my first battle report, you see we do it all the time. Uh, it just gives that little bit of the similitude to the game and uh, it's always satisfying to do. So if you can be bothered, I highly recommend magnetizing your weapons where it's easy to do. So a beautiful model, that one, as you can see, it's really solid and chunky. It's a carrier, of course, so it's got SRS, which is a short range squadron tokens that come with it. Here they are. You get three in the game and they've got three little uh, planes on each of those. Of course, in uh, lots of other sets, uh, you'll be getting more and more of these 
bases, you can build up a whole huge collection of these eventually. And that shows you how many SRS tokens are on the board. So you can do a pile of like five of these and stick that on the top and you know you've got five tokens uh, in that particular pile. Let's go on now to the Frontline Cruiser. And this is this one here. It's a lovely ship. Lots of lovely detail in there. Now this has lots of options. It can be built as the Albion, the Bedivere, the Picton, the Lancelot, or the Sabre. So I built this one as the uh, Albion, which is two heavy guns. And of course they're magnetized as well, those guns. So I can pop those off. Now the basic differences in these ones is just number of guns and usually the length of the ship. Some ships are, may have only one gun, like for example the uh, Bedivere has just one rocket battery and they might have a shorter uh, back, what do you call it, on the ship. It's the, there's the prow up the front and the stern. There we go, shorter stern. Uh, just showing my knowledge of naval terms there. It actually should be pretty good considering how many Patrick O'Brien books I've read and things like that. But yeah, the stern. So uh, you get all these different configurations and usually as I said, I go with the rule of cool, so I get I build the one that looks the best. And if I wanted to call this model a, a Bedivere or a Picton or a Lancelot or any of the other ones, and my, my opponent agreed with that and didn't have a problem with that, that's absolutely fine. Uh, because the actual length of the ship and everything is different, you can't really magnetize it to uh, allow for all the different options. So if you're really, really picky and you must have the exact right configuration on the board, of course, you'd be buying more, more extra sets. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, I just choose the one that looks good. And this look is a beautiful ship. Now, the paint um, scheme, I've used the one that uh, War Cradle have put online. And I think it looks great. The grey is perhaps a little bit darker than I would have gone originally, but it just turned out that way. The way I painted these was to spray them uh, with a primer coat of Mechanica Standard Grey, which comes in a spray can, of course. And that gave me a lovely all over grey. And then I basically just washed the whole thing with Agrax Earthshade. So that really darkened down the grey, uh, gave some lovely uh, detail to the shadow lines and things like that. And, you know, I was sort of happy with that grey colour. It came out well against the rule of cool, what looks good for me. So I'm not worried about historical uh, color patterns and things like that. So I was pleased with how it came out and I thought the dark metallic um, worked really well with the red. Now I've written down some Citadel colors that I used in case you want to follow this uh, color scheme. As I said, Mechanica standard gray undercoat for the whole thing, then a wash of Agrax Earthshade. And then I highlighted it up with Dawnstone and finally Althuan Grey. Now I didn't use dry brushing for these, I actually highlighted by hand. So uh, I did quite a bit of uh, um, highlighting with the Dawnstone and then the Althuan Grey is, is quite light and just tiny little tips, bits of that on the tips and the highest highlights. And that gives a nice level of depth to the basic grey colour. Uh, for the red, I used Corn Red and I mixed it with a little bit of black to make it even darker. And I highlighted that with Mephiston Red and then even a little bit more lighter highlights with Wild Rider Red. Usually three levels give you a really nice uh, range of colors. So you've got your base color, your highlight, and then your extreme highlight. For the gold areas, I used Retributor Armor, and uh, I mixed that with a little bit of Rhinox Hide just to make it a bit darker again because I didn't want it to be too bright. For the wood, I used a contrast paint. This is the wood decking, especially on the carrier. I used a contrast paint called Gore Grunter Fur. And because it's a contrast paint, of course, it goes into all the detail and looks fantastic. On the decking of the carrier, I did then a bit of highlighting just in the central part of each area of decking uh, and dry brushed with Doom Bull Brown. And that's basically the color scheme. Uh, it's very, very simple to do. The uh, metallic areas, of course, are just lead belcher. Again, that's washed with Agrax Earthshade. Uh, I did that before I did the overall wash, wash of Agrax Earthshade, and that's highlighted a little bit up with uh, Runefang Steel. There you have it, that's the colour scheme. Now continuing with the ships, we have three support cruisers. These come in three configurations, and we have the Athelstan, the Agincourt, and the Hotspur. And I made these up as the Agincourt ships because they have this cool uh, naval mortar here, which is this huge gun sticking out, it looks great. 
And again, I could say that these were Athelstan or Hotspurs if I wanted to. Well, actually not Hotspur so much because the Hotspur is a support carrier and has a completely different deck. So it actually has a carrier deck over the top. So I wouldn't go so far as to call this a Hotspur carrier ship, but certainly it could stand in for Athelstan if I needed to. But because, you know, I'm not playing Dystopian Wars all the time. So, uh, of course, I'd probably never get to the point where I'd say it was a different ship. I'd be quite happy to have that as an Asian Core ship all the time. Next we have what for me is the design highlight of this very lovely set and it is the Morgana Assault Submarine. And what a cool model this is. It's got a real sort of Captain Nemo feel. It's very streamlined and, and cool. I just love it. Really nice model. I'd, I'd love to get more of these because it's a whole fleet of these. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, they're pretty nasty too. They've got a keel saw at the front so uh, really good for ramming. Uh, some of these other ships have rams as well, so they do like ramming. Uh, it's got a torpedo salvo and a heavy torpedo salvo. And what a beautiful model that is. I absolutely love it. Then there's a lovely collection of smaller ships. We've got six Excalibur class destroyers and six Caliburn class frigates. So 12 models there, uh, two different types. They are just absolutely lovely little models. So there you have it, the Victory Battle Fleet set for the Crown. And I've got to say, one thing I love about these uh, Dystopian Wars sets is that you get an impressive little fleet in each one of these boxes. Now, of course, you can buy the smaller boxes to add to your fleet, but buy one of these and you've got a fantastic basis for a fleet. You could play a game with this as it is. They're not too hard to paint. As I said, there's not a huge range of colours uh, that I supplied you with there. Easy to paint. A bit of washing brings out all the detail. If you want to keep that really clean color without the overall wash, you can actually paint in all the little detail, which isn't too hard to do, and keep that sort of clean gray color. And I've been, as I've been doing my fleets, going through and using different gray colors as the basis of them to differentiate the different fleets. But later on, as I've shown you more of these, uh, I'll do a compare and contrast video as well, so you can see all the fleets that I've painted together and see how um, I've given them different color schemes so they can really be separated when they're on the tabletop. I particularly love this set. I love the, the simple color scheme of the dark red and the gold. I think it looks fantastic. And the ship designs are just gorgeous. Uh, War Cradle are just hitting it out of the park with these ship designs. They're beautiful. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Victory Battle Fleet set. Stay tuned for more Dystopian Wars because I'll be showing off another set which I've uh, already finished painting. So I'll be showing you that soon. And I'm really hoping to get another battle report film for you soon as well. War Cradle are constantly releasing new things for Dystopian Wars. It's a very cool game. Go and check out my first battle report to see how it plays and get a feel for it. And if you enjoy the idea of steampunk naval battles, you are going to absolutely love it. Thanks very much for watching. I'm from the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Orderofgamers.com is the website to visit. And of course, you'll find there a rule summary and reference that I've made for Dystopian Wars that will make learning and playing the game a lot easier. Go and check it out. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscription button and hit the all notifications bell so you get notification of upcoming videos. I'm on all social media channels as well and Patreon if you choose to support me uh, where you get uh, access to our exclusive Discord channel where people are showing off their um, miniatures and talking about the games they're playing. It's a great little community. See you next time everybody. Thanks very much for watching and good gaming.